Hey Zach with the ECU Master. Today we're going to show you how to install a Bosch 4.9 Wideband O2 sensor kit. So this is our uh, 491 kit. So that includes a, an insulated long harness terminated to a nice Deutsch connector. So if you need to run this through your firewall um, or run it a longer length through the car, uh, we give you some additional length with the pre-made harness. It makes it a little bit easier to install. So what we're gonna do is get this out of the packaging, gather our tools up and show you exactly how to wire this thing into your ECU. All right, so I've unpacked our kit here. So here's the pre-made harness we give you. So this is the sensor side. That's nice and sealed, color-coded wires, uh, fiberglass heat sheathing, really protects it. Um, so you'll run this close to the ECU. And then we're gonna meet up with this connector, the other side of it. And we're gonna make a harness that goes from this connector to the ECU itself. So first and foremost, I'm gonna strip all these wires and then we'll start putting terminals on them. So I'm gonna strip back roughly just shy of like a quarter inch on each of these wires. So now that all our wires are stripped, I've got good clean copper on both sides. I'm gonna do the uh, Deutsch connector side first. It's the gray connector side. So I actually have a bespoke tool for this. You can use just a regular open barrel crimper. There's absolutely no problem with that. And I've shown you how to do that in some couple of other videos. This one's super easy. Insert the terminal, insert your wire, and this is just a one step. Hits it all at once, makes a beautiful crimp. So I'm gonna do the rest of those. All right, now that I've got these all terminated, I'm actually going to mate this up so I match colors side to side and just start populating this connector. So when I say populate, I mean, I'm actually gonna slide the terminals into the connector housing. So I've got black in position six. Then go green and white. So green goes to five. And again, these colors, I mean, color does not change the, the properties of a wire. It's just for you to keep track of it. So if you get a color mismatched somewhere, and you get in a bind and you need to leave it mismatched, that's fine, just document it, make sure somebody else knows if they come in after you what's actually happening. Um, so we got black to black, green, white. Other side we've got red, then yellow, and then finally gray. So this is on an EMU black. If you've got an EMU classic, this would be a 4.2 sensor not a 4.9. Um, the black you can use either 4.2 or a 4.9. And on the classic, you'd only actually have five wires instead of six because you measure the resistance of a circuit in the actual sensor and you input that data into the ECU. With the black, we do use all five wires. Um, what's interesting is that you're not gonna see five wire, or you're not gonna see, excuse me, we use six wires, but you're only gonna see five on the back of the sensor itself because there's a resistor inside this connector that jumpers it over, but there are six connectors or six terminals in that connector. So we're done with that side. The only thing left is we'll grab this lock. And normally you can get a, a lock that only accepts this one way to key it a certain way. But since we're not using this connector next to another one that's similar, it doesn't matter if it's keyed or not. You drop that in the front of the connector. Normally you want to do this with a pair of needleless pliers, which I do not have handy and you'll push it down all the way. It'll lock and hold the terminals in place. So we're gonna move to the other side now. This is gonna be the connection at the ECU. So for all six of these wires, the red is going to be, excuse me, let me look at the color code. So we're gonna make sure I'm numbered this correctly. So one is red, that's YBO IP. That's gonna go to a terminal in the ECU. So that just gets a regular ECU connector. And that goes to, on here is terminal one, WBO IP. On this side we find WBO IP is terminal 19. So you know, looking at this diagram, this is pin 13, it's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Terminal two is WVGND. That's two there, and that matches up. Flip 
flip it over. That's pin 33. So now this is 39, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Insert that guy. Good there. Pin 3 is wide band heater. And that's looks like gray on here. We'll check and see what color we've got. It's a gray. And that one's actually on our gray connector. That's pin 19 on the gray connector. So 17, 18, 19 is the third one. On the bottom row. And to make this a little less clumsy, I'm actually going to pop these on the ECU. I'm doing work like this. I'll just leave the locks halfway, make it easier to keep track of. So that was pin three. Pin four is going to be our 12 volt heater circuit. The other side of it's going to be a 12 volt fuel, 12 volt fused power supply. And that one I'm actually not going to terminate right now because I don't have a power wire to splice into. So that's our white wire. So what you would do is grab like the ignition switch power or 12 volt power from anywhere near the ECU. Anything that's on when the key is on, you'd splice into that and the power for your heater circuit. Really important that you have that in place. Pin five is our uh, calibration resistor. It's RCAL, that's the green wire. So I'm gonna throw a terminal on that one. Flip it over, double check, see where it goes. It's pin 22 on the black connector. So this is pin 26, five, four, three, two. And one more terminal. So we've got our last terminal. That's WOVS. That's pin six. We're gonna double check. That is our black wire, pin six. Crimp that bad boy on. Again, really critical that you test your connections and do a pull test, make sure they're you've got good conduction. You're not using old corroded wire. You're not using bent up, beat up terminals that have been the bottom of your toolbox for three years. So that last one, WVS, that is terminal six on the black connector. So starting from the top left, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Pop that guy in. we're good to go. So again, you would splice your 12 volt supply into a, a switch 12 volt supply. That's the only last connection. Then this guy with the lock in it plugs into our harness. The other side connects to the sensor and you're all done. So if you're doing this without our harness and you're terminating directly to the sensor, you basically skip the steps of batching everything up because you're running it straight from this connector to the ECU. So just one last step. But that's it. That's how to install a Bosch 4.9 sensor.